One of the essential things you'd need to learn to use the Wekio environment is how to use Wekio's harmonized data access. Um, this is a uh, data access system that can be operated through an API that allows you to access the wide variety of data that's available from all different organizations that are involved in operating the satellites under Copernicus and in providing the data for the services. Uh, within the code that we've provided you, you can have a look in the Wekio JupyterLab folder and then navigate to Wekio HCA. And in here is an example notebook, this one here, Wekio Harmonized Data Access underscore API, that will walk you through the process of working with this data. So if you double click on that, it will open, as you can see here. Uh, with a Jupyter Notebook, um, you have interactive uh, text and code based environment uh, that you can look at and that you can write in as well. So you could write notebooks like this for yourself. This is one we've prepared to help you walk you through step by step how to set up a query uh, to the Harmonized Data Access API. And uh, the functions that are in this script and that are actually detailed in the uh, notebook and Python uh, f um, files that you see here form the basis of many of the other scripts that you'll be looking at during this training. So once you get into the notebook environment, you can read the text around the different um, sections. And I would highly recommend that you read all the text that's provided in the narrative because it helps to explain what's going on in uh, the other cells that you see here. So this is a code cell uh, that we can actually execute. And to execute a cell in Jupyter Notebook, you click on it or highlight it. And then you can press this play button up here, which uh, allows you to run the selected cell and it will then advance uh, naturally onto the next one. So if we quick click that, you'll see that this number increases here and it's actually executed that cell. So generally, when we're working with Jupyter Notebooks or in fact any Python scripting, uh, the first thing we will do is import all the necessary libraries that we want to work with. So that's what's happened here. And that's what I just executed there. The same here, we're actually going to uh, execute and import the uh, functions that we've developed for working with the Harmonized Data Access API. So again, if you see if I click the play button up here, this number increases and that um, piece of code there is executed. If there was any error, you'd see text come up below. So I have actually already pre-run this notebook for you, so we don't have to go through and do things uh, step by step. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to run some things, especially the data queries, um, which I would very much encourage you to do yourself from beginning to end. Uh, if you want to clear um, any of the um, cells you've already run, you can go up here to kernel, and this goes for any Jupyter notebook, and you can restart the kernel and clear all outputs. And that will wipe everything clean, including the memory, uh, which you may need to have uh, clear in order to uh, properly run the notebooks. So this notebook starts off by telling you a little bit about what the HDA is. We then load in the libraries. The next section is about how to search for data sets on Wekio. And you can do this through the interactive portal as well. If you click on this link, it will take you to it. Uh, the catalog there provides information about all the different products that are available through the Harmonized Data Access API. In fact, behind the scenes, uh, this portal, when you search for data and you add it, is using the uh, Harmonized Data Access itself uh, to access some of this data and search for it. So once you've searched for something you're interested in, you can then find out lots and lots of different bits of information about each of the data sets. And this is quite important when you want to set up um, a query to the Harmonized Data Access in a programmatic way, as we're going to do in this notebook, because um, you need some of this metadata in order to construct your query. Uh, one of the most important things, as this next section uh, talks about, is the data set ID. So in this example, we're going to be looking at um, Ulchi data. So Ulchi is the ocean and land color instrument aboard each of the Sentinel-3 satellites. And we're going to see if we can search for level 1B4 resolution data. So this is the uncorrected data um, in terms of the atmosphere. It's already geocorrected, geolocated, for example. There's some calibration done, uh, but it's not corrected for the uh, effects of the atmosphere to give you an ocean product. Um, so it's called level 1B. And it's full resolution. So this is at the full uh, 300 meter resolution that the Ulchi sensor offers. There's also a reduced resolution uh, product that you might want to consider if you're covering larger areas with your work or if you don't need the uh, full resolution uh, data. and You just want to keep your data usage lower. Uh, for this example, if you search in the Wekio um, web portal, if you search for this data product, you'll find this entrance in the catalog here. And there we can see what the data set ID is. So in our next cell of code down here, we actually define what the data set ID is. Uh, you can see that here. And this is really important because we need to use this in order to construct our query. 
The next section shows you how to um, get approved access for using the Wekio Harmonized Data Access API. And to do this, you need an API token, which is generated from your specific API key that's associated to your username and password. So in this script here, you'll see it just says username, password. This is not my username and password, but I'm not going to share them with you. You should always keep your passwords um, safe and secure. In here, you need to enter in the uh, quotation marks your own username and your password, and then you can execute this in order to retrieve your API key. As I said, I've pre-run this, so when I ran this earlier, this was the API key that was returned. You could also enter it manually if you generate it uh, using functions as described above here. But this does it quite nicely in, qu in quite a neat automated way, which is much more useful than you having to do things manually all the time. The next section here is then using the functions that we've developed to work with the Harmonized Data Access API to initialize. Um, so we start off by saying where we want to put the data. So at the moment, we're putting this in our current working directory, and that's what this function here means in Python, just get the current working directory, CWD. And it allows us to say, put the data here when you've downloaded it, please. Uh, then we initialize a dictionary that we're gonna use to store all the information we need for our query. We then get our access token. This is using the uh, API keys and tokens uh, that we've just uh, generated above. We accept our terms and conditions. And then we can set up the next stage of our data request. So the important thing here then is to load a data descriptor file and to request the data. So data requests uh, in Wekio and indeed in many other APIs are dealt with uh, through what they call a JSON file. And we've provided an example here you can actually open it it's over here on the left, Alci Data Descriptor.json. And if you double click on it, you'll see what it is. Um, you can expand these to see the different keys, for example. Um, but this basically is a description of the data that we want to go and get. So you can actually also access examples of the JSON files for each of the different um, data sets in Wekio from the Wekio portal. So you can click when you search for your um, a data set of interest, you can click the show API request button here, and that will uh, give you an example of the JSON file that you would need here to make this request. So you can cut and paste that in uh, already. So the next section here is just about um, setting up uh, a JSON file. So this actually shows you how to write your own. So in this script, you could actually uh, manually write it. So what we've got here will actually write in um, to the JSON file uh, that we've got there. We open it here and then we can write other things in here if we like. After that, we then initiate our request and this assigns a job ID, which effectively launches the data request uh, as a particular instance and submits that query to the HDA um, Harmonized Data Access API uh, service in order to um, see if it can find our data. And here you'll see that the query has been submitted and that it's running. Uh, this um, text just tells us when you initiate, when you um, execute this line of code here, it will just tell you what's going on. Uh, so behind the scenes, it's running and as it's still running, it tells you until it's completed. Once the query has been completed, you'll end up with a list of file names, which you can then uh, choose to order and download. So we can generate a list here, which is what happens in this section. We create then an order ID, which allows us to download, uh, the, to submit those orders and download uh, those files. And lastly, once we've created that list of things that we want to order and download, we send off the download request. So this last um, command here basically just says, go and download the data for this query that I've created above. And when you've done that, you will see um, a response. If you run this uh, piece of code, here, this uh, cell of code here, you'll see various outputs which tell you what is being downloaded to where. So this is the path in the data file that I found above. It tells you what the file size is and shows you uh, the progress in terms of the download, how fast it's going, etc., and then tells you when the download is complete and how long it took. And then you should see the uh, data appear in the current working directory. So in this case here, because I've already run this, you can see that this is the data file uh, that I requested. It's a Sentinel-3b, Ulchi level one EFR, which is the, uh, the top of atmosphere full resolution product. So you can alter this script yourself. Um, you can change the JSON file. 
Uh, you can uh, change the times and the bounding boxes for your search. You can even just uh, go to the web portal here um, and search as we've done here for a specific API request and cut and paste that in. And you can use this script as a basis to download any data that you're interested in. So I highly recommend trying to run this once. When you uh, clone it over, there'll be no um, output in these boxes here or below these boxes. So you'll have to run through the whole notebook yourself to generate it. Once you've done it once in a, a kind of default mode as we've provided it, then you can go back and change some of the uh, parameters. You can add in a new JSON file and you can download some data for yourself that's of particular interest to you. As always, if you have any problems with this, you can contact us on the chat and we'll help you to uh, address any issues you have or answer any questions about how these queries are created. Uh, with APIs, you can create queries in many, many different ways. Uh, this one is just designed to help you understand the process behind the scenes.